January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. It is a highly preventable and treatable cancer, yet 4,200 people still die from the disease this year. According to the American Cancer Society, that is what it, they're predicting. Here to talk about prevention is Dr. John Devine from Gulf Coast Medical Group. And Dr. Cervical Cancer is kind of most thought of as something we would catch through a pap smear, but I understand that the rules for getting pap smears have changed. Can you tell us about that? That's true. Uh, two years ago, 2013, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, looking at the history of both abnormal PAPs and HPV, the human papillomavirus, which is now the most common cause of cervical cancer, came out and showed that where we used to start at age 18, mm -hmm. or when a woman started with sexual activity, we now don't even start screening until 21. So oh, no wow. screening of anybody under the age of 21. Wow. Really? From the age of 21 to 30, the recommendations are just the cytology or just the cell testing every three years. Okay. So we actually go to every three years now. So when we talk about who mm. should be tested under the age of 21, it's no one. And then you said 21 to 29, that's where the three every years comes three in. Years. Every three years. Okay. Mm. Now, and that's just a regular part of your <coughs> pap smear though. That's correct. Okay. It's just what we're doing is the pap smear, collecting those cells. The pathologist will look at those cells, looking for any type of abnormality. And as you get older, between, you know, what happens then? Well, what we know is that girls under 21 clear the virus within two years. And they clear mm. it much more readily than women 21 to 30. And we know that it's cleared even slower in women over 30. So after the age mm. of 30, the new recommendations are that women are screened either with a pap smear and HPV testing called co-testing every five years, that's mm. the recommendation, or just the cells every three years. So mm. for a woman who gets the quote-unquote annual exam, the annual exam now doesn't need to include a pap smear every year. That's correct. Okay, and well, that's kind of a bonus, people. Well, <laughs> yeah. well and then you yeah. said over 65, what happens? Well, over the age of 65, it depends on a patient's history. Mm. For instance, if a woman has had a high-risk lesion, uh, one of the higher rates, if a woman has had a previous cervical cancer things, then the recommendation is they're tested every three years for 20 years from the time of whatever their treatment was. Wow. Right, so if a woman has had two normal um, pap smears with the screening and HPV or three normal regular pap smears, after the age of 65 they don't need screening. Well as with any cancer treatment, once it is detected is so important. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about risks and symptoms so we mm -hmm. know exactly what we're looking for. Well, the biggest risk with cervical cancer is exposure to HPV, human papillomavirus. There are low risk and high risk viruses and we can now test for those high risk viruses. And that's from sexual activity. That's obviously. correct. It's Unprotected sexually sexual it's protected. activity. Unprotected, meaning no condoms or mm -hmm. no barrier, correct. The biggest risk seems to be in women over the age of 30 who remain persistently positive for the high risk HPVs. Mm. But the biggest thing is the women who develop the cancers are the ones who either don't get testing mm -hmm. or aren't screened properly. They don't okay. follow up with their testing. And what kind of symptoms do we have if we would be too concerned about developing it? It might be something like irregular bleeding. A woman may have some spotting or irregularity after intercourse or relations and things. But most of it's going to be, even though you don't get the pap smear, women should still have a pelvic exam every year. Okay. Whether it's done with their family physician, their gynecologist, or whomever, someone should still be looking. Before we let you go, we hear all about HPV. I know as parents of you know, young girls, mm -hmm. we hear about the, the vaccine right. mm -hmm. to help prevent HPV. Yeah. Kids are scared of it. Moms are scared of it. Should we do it? Absolutely. I have a 23-year-old who got it. 10 years ago. And does it help? Wow. Absolutely. So that's young, so you can yeah. do it as young as? The recommendations are that we get boys and girls oh, wow. vaccinated at age 11 to 12. Wow. And I think just like you know, smallpox and other things, with the HPV vaccine, we may eradicate cervical cancer in young women wow. and Amazing. other cancers okay. that, you know, in, in boys so and cheap. girls. And is this and new no that boys? Effects? It's, it's, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, is it no. new that boys get the vaccine? In the last year or two, I think what they've shown is that because boys transmit, that's where the girls are getting it. Absolutely. But there's uh, penile cancer, <laughs> cervical <laughs> cancer, uh, uh, pharyngeal cancer, and anal cancer that is associated. So I think that you know, from a general health standpoint, 
It's very important. Wow. I recommend it to all my patients. Like I say, I gave it to my daughter when it first came out right. because I felt so strong. And at like least it. this is a cancer we can talk about where we feel like we're making forward progress. Okay. Yep, so I think with that vaccine, next. hopefully, we'll eradicate this cancer. That's great news. Well, that's yep. All right. Amazing. Thanks, Sean. Great to have you here. For more information on Gulf Coast Medical Group's Women's Health and Wellness Program, you can visit gulfcoastmedicalgroup.net. Coming up next, it's Money Matters. We're going to ask some questions about the January effect.